of causation, but rather <laughs> Let's turn to Isaiah 62 6. Let's do it. Is that really the truth? Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, who will never hold their peace day or night. You who are his servants, and by your prayers, just listen to that, by your prayers, put the Lord in remembrance of his promises. Keep not silence. It's not enough to think it in your heart. You put the Lord in re remembrance by speaking it out. You're proclaiming. Remember, you're making a confession of your profession because this is your profession as believers to speak God's word and declare it and make it so upon this earth because his word's already um, it's already established in heaven we're establishing it here okay you don't you already have what you see right that's not what you want what you see is not what you want in a lot of instances like we just had a conversation so we're going to speak against that by speaking what we want um, one of the great men, in, um, a great man of God, once um, he, he wrote several books that I just devour over and over again. And he said um, that God told him the, prom the problem with my people is that they keep saying what they have instead of what I told them they can have. So we got we have to remember to keep proclaiming what God says that we can have from His Word. Okay. So. Let's go to John 3.30. <laughs> this is what we have. This is what we want. This is what we are. The word of God. It is powerful. John 3.30. You think there's coffee in, in heaven? Um, is coffee good? <laughs> then it's in heaven. It's, 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 it's going to be multiple. Yeah. 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 Just awesome. like Pastor says, that yeah. it, there has to be. There better be Mexican Absolutely. food in heaven. Or it's not <laughs> saying. It's a lot of, Remember, I this is heaven. I, live, I, I believe I mean, that. I agree with that. Like right. <laughs> I think that God yeah. created yeah. all good things. Yeah. God in heaven. So jalapeno. 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 Habanero. I have a green one. And. You know, and my mom, my different family members had passed away, and they were having dinner. And in my dream, I could smell my mom's food. And mm. I knew I was in heaven. And this is really a year, because there were people there, and I was like, why are you here? <laughs> just like the, just, yeah, just like Pastor judging, always says, judging? that you're going to yeah. see people that you wouldn't expect, but that and you're going to not like, see people you expect. I would see a very baby Christian when I have that dream. Judges Catholic. The funny thing was that I sat down because I saw the food and I was like, oh, it's good. But it was good coffee, okay? Good <laughs> job! <laughs> and, uh, I sat down and my mom, she was really serious and she tells me, you need to leave now. And I was like, I was so happy to see my dad because I was a big time daddy's girl. So I'm like, daddy? <laughs> and my dad was like, you heard your mom, you oh, And he was always yes. like that. And then I left and, and I told my husband, I said, man, I said, we're going to have those dinners with your family in heaven. Praise and God. And I woke up and I said, it, it is true, that happens. I said, I saw people there that I'm surprised they were there. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, so heaven's going to be here, <laughs> not so up there. John, John so 3.30. We need to understand. That I don't know where it is. I don't okay, know Okay, I think it's going to be multiplied. But it was very pretty. Mm -hmm. in the Thousands. Earth in heaven. Uh -huh. We're bringing John earth, heaven into earth. Our that's, that's, Bible that's verse our of the year. Oh, he must increase, I must decrease. He must, he must increase, but I must decrease. He must grow more prominent, and I must grow less so. More of him and less of us. Amen. Our biblical character trait is helpfulness. Helpfulness. Galatians 6 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. 
bear, endure, carry one another's burdens and troublesome moral faults, and in this way fulfill and observe perfectly the law of Christ, the Messiah, and complete what is lacking in your obedience to it. Really spells it out for us there. Yes. What we're to do, help each other, be helpful to each other, walk it out. That was Today, a message from Veggie Tales yesterday. <laughs> if you can help, and it's God continues, capacity, to, help. God continues yeah. to confirm His word. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Faith comes. You know, when faith comes, faith moves. So faith comes and faith moves. Right? It's not idle. It's not stagnant. You don't ever stay where you are. When you're walking by faith, you're always moving towards something you're going somewhere your faith is moving something amen sometimes you do have to stand by faith but that's only because you're taking some new territory right yes things are happening spiritually let's turn to romans 10 12. it's our foundation scriptures Romans 10, 12, <clears throat> starting in verse 12. Here you go. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, so we know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith doesn't come by heard, what you heard. Oh. It's by hearing, continually hearing and hearing the word of God. And that's why every day you need to be putting the word inside of you. It would be like not eating or taking vitamins on a daily basis. You would get weak physically. Well, spiritually, if you're not putting the word in you, you are going to get weak it's not just what you remember the word says. I mean, there are going to be days when maybe you don't have the ability to spend a lot of time, but you can just take a few minutes and get that one scripture and just, okay, I'm going to meditate on this all day. You know, the Lord will show you um, what verse he wants you to meditate on that day if it's just one, okay? Galatians, let's go to Galatians 3.22. And then 3, the Hebrew, beloved, hearing means heeding. So the application, and the only way that comes is just as uh, Deanna is talking taking about. It in, you have to become the word. So you pour it in. Galatians 3, 22. Galatians 3, 22. Now you made there's so many ways that you can just... There is. It's on your phone. You know, it's yeah. We're without everywhere. excuse. We, we don't have any excuse now. <laughs> we are absolutely without excuse. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Okay? That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. It's all by faith. Okay, so this is just going to be really a recap of what we've been learning all year is that faith comes always if you're putting the word in faith is gonna come if you feel like Lord I'm 
you start you feel like you're starting to doubt a promise that you're standing on get in the word if you feel like you're losing the battle that you've been fighting get in the word because you need your faith to be active and strong at all times faith always comes regardless of how you feel regardless of how things look faith always comes if it's activated and we know that the law of faith is that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? And we just read here that whosoever will believe, right? And then we've always, uh, since we've been coming together, we've always stood on Mark eleven twenty three that says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that whatsoever he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So it's whosoever. The God kind of faith comes to whosoever will. Whosoever will what? Whosoever will speak to the mountain, will speak to that seemingly impossible situation, right? Faith always comes. Let's go to Romans 12.3. Romans 12, 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man, every man. They actually added the word man in here. It, sh it, was ju it did just say, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every that is among you. And in the King James Version, when they've added a word that wasn't originally there in the Greek, they'll, I, I test I italicize. italicize the word, yes. So you know that they're just trying to give you further understanding, okay? For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself. And the original would have said, not to think more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to God, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith, okay? So God has given you the measure of faith. He has given to every man the same measure of faith. Kenneth Copeland wasn't given more than we were. He has developed his faith more than we have, okay? So you can develop your faith. If you see a great man and woman of God and you're like, well, I wish I had their faith, well, get busy. Start working at it. You know, our Arnold Schwarzenegger had the same muscles that we did. How did he get that buff? Well, he started working out day and night, taking the correct nutrients. We do the same thing spiritually when we are exercising and building our faith. The measure of faith is given to every man. Let's go to Ephesians 2.8. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It is a gift of God that he's given you, that measure of faith. We're not to take it um, lightly, amen? It's a gift. Receive it. Now let's go down to verse 10. This, we bind that spirit of distraction right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we bind any hindrances right now in Jesus' name. This word of God will go into the good soil of our hearts, the kingdom of God, to grow. And we're going to guard that word right now in the name of Jesus. We're not going to let the enemy keep us from getting the word, the seed, now in Jesus' name. Okay. Ephesians 2.10. This verse really changed my life. <coughs> Ephesians 2.10. I mean, the whole word of God did, but this one really gave me a wake-up call. For we are his workmanship. 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them, that we should walk in the, pa- the paths or the plans of him, that he has for us. We are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. Some translations actually say his masterpiece. Just think that you are God's masterpiece. Recreated in Christ Jesus. You are born anew. You are not that same person that you were before. You are different. And you are, if you will get into the word, you will be continually transformed into his likeness. You will become more and more like him. You will become more beautiful and just enlightened with his light within you. And that goes back to John 3.30 that we read every week that our Bible verse of the year. Recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Amen? So, his workmanship. We are his workmanship, created in his likeness. We are being transformed every day as we put his word within us. Our faith is growing, and we are being transformed from the inside out. It's like if you went to a plastic surgeon and he did some work to your face or gave you a facelift or, you know, gave you a nose job or something. But you don't have to go under the knife for this. All you have to do is take a transfusion of the Word of God. Lots of times when I'm, you know, feeling maybe, because it doesn't go by feeling, but maybe I'm feeling a little under the weather. I'll just, you know, read the scriptures on healing, and I'll just see myself getting a blood transfusion, because that's what we have with the blood of Jesus, that his blood is covering that pain or that infection that's trying to come over me, and it is wiping it out. I'm already covered by the blood of Jesus. That's a blood transfusion that we're taking. The same thing, you know, you, if something bothers you about yourself, tell me God, you know, he will help you in that area, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, maybe it's somebody. He's going to give you the wisdom and the insight and how to deal with that. If it, if it concerns you, it concerns God. He says that he's going to perfect that which concerneth us. Amen. So I'll just read that scripture and I'll say, Lord, you say that you perfect that which concerneth me. And I know that's true because, and then I'll name all the things that he's perfected already in my life. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say, these things concern me right now. Now I know you're going to, you you are perfecting them, which means that you're going to make it right. right? That what I've prayed over them is going to come to pass. So I just thank you for it now. You know, you remind God, but you do it in faith. Amen. You walk it out. Now, you are his workmanship. He is doing something in you so that you can do what he's put you here to do. But he knows in order for you to fulfill what he has put you here to do, he's got to do some work in here. And he can only do that if you're taking this. This is your manual for life, your vitamins. You are taking this daily. And you're putting it in. And then you're doing what it tells you to do. Amen. And you can only do that through him. Second Thessalonians. Let's go to Second Thessalonians 3, 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. And that we may be delivered from perverse, improper, unrighteous, and wicked, actively malicious men. For not everybody has faith and is held by it. Not all men have faith. Only the reborn, the born again, have faith. The faith that we're talking about is the God kind of faith. You can only have that when you're born again. So remember that. All men don't have faith. And not all men have developed faith, okay? Faith grows out of the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We read that in Romans. You know, 
Faith grows out of the word, not by praying about it, believe it or not. Faith doesn't come by praying for it. You can pray for faith all day long, but until you take what it tells us you need to in order to get faith, you're not going to get it. Okay? So, faith grows out of the word of God, day in and day out, putting it in your ears, putting it in your eyes. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Prayer doesn't cause faith to work. Faith causes prayer to work. <laughs> okay? Prayer does not cause faith to work. But faith causes the prayer to work. So when we come together, we're praying the prayer of faith. And that's why our prayers get answered. Why are you going to pray for something that you already have? Why pray for something that you already have? You already have faith. You already have faith. That's what I'm asking you. How, why are you going to pray for faith when he, we've read that he's already given us a measure of faith? He's not telling you to pray that he gives you more faith. He's telling you, develop your faith. Develop your faith. Build it up. Believe okay? me. Believe me. Now, in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith moves. It's a tangible force. Faith moves. When you are walking by faith, your faith is going to tell you what to do. It may tell you to keep standing, do nothing, just rest, knowing that God's already done it. It may tell you to start praising Him because it's a done thing. I remember when I had been praying and praying and standing on the Word and meditating the Scriptures and, you know, believing that my daughter would be healed. And God gave me a scripture to stand on um, in Mark 4, and I would just read it day and night, day and night, just proclaiming it, believing that what God had done for the woman with the issue of blood and for Jairus' daughter, he would do for my, my daughter. And I remember I was driving on 410. I was going to get on I-10 over here, and God told me, start just praising him and thanking him that she's healed. It is done. Fear not, believe only. I remember the exact spot I was on, in on the highway. And I was like, oh, like, I just felt it like in my spirit, it is done. Start praising my name. So I just started thanking him. There was no physical manifestation that she was healed, but I started proclaiming it, thanking him and thanking him and just praising his name. Within a couple of weeks, you know, she was completely healed and delivered. So do what it's telling you. But you're not going to hear it clearly unless you're in the word of God. You're in the Word of God, day and night. Faith you know, and when you're God. believing for something big like that, when it's life and death, you're going to do what it takes, right? You're not going to just be like, oh, woe is me, you know. Yeah. I just hope God chooses to heal her, you know. No, he it's His will to heal Third every single person, every person. So we have to believe that. But faith takes action. Yes. action on your part. It's not that what you're doing is going to make him move. He's already done it. It's yes. just clearing the spiritual yes. realm it's for to it to receive, it to be received. To believe it. Amen. You have to receive it and by faith. It. It's already here. Now Thank to receive it, you. you have to clear the spiritual forces that are separating it from you to bring it in. And sometimes you have to wait because things are being moved out of the way spiritually for it to come forth. You're believing for your new house, your new car, your promotion. Well, people and things have to be moved out of the way. You just have to stand knowing that it's taking place. It's already here. It's already done. I'm going to be patient, Lord, because I know that no good thing will you withhold from me as I diligently seek you. And I just thank you, Lord, that it is mine. I see it, and I thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you, Lord. I, I know that you are, you know, a lot of you are believing for promotion for yourself or for your, your spouses. You just know that God's moving people around. There's paperwork being moved. It's going to this place and that place, and you think that he would, or he thinks he would be good in this position, but God sees him up here, and so God's got to move these people out of the way, and he's got to get this paperwork to this person, and, you know, things are happening. It's moving as long as you continue to believe it. Don't stop the angels, the spiritual forces that are working on your, your behalf by speaking yes. words of doubt or unbelief. Yes. Just keep standing. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Your new car is coming. 
Um, just believe it, that it is. Maybe it's not the color that you want is not at the dealership yet, and God knows that that is your favorite color. You may not even know that it's your favorite color, but he knows, and he knows that you would like that extra feature. And so he is going to bring that to the dealership or, you know, place that ad in the paper. Who knows? You, you can only know if you're diligently seeking him and waiting him, believing that he's doing it in your behalf. Faith is a tangible force, a spiritual force, and it's moving. It's moving mountains because whosoever will speak to the mountain. And move it to the sea. Something it will like be that. removed. <laughs> it's going to be removed. Um, he's parting the seas for you. But you have to have your faith so that when you speak, it's working for you, and it's continuing to work, and you're not stopping it. Faith should never, never, ever be allowed to stand still. Even if you're standing in faith, your faith is working, okay? Faith means that you're never to remain static. A lot of times after we've gone through this big battle, and I know this from experience, we've been fighting this spiritual battle, we've been standing in faith, and once the victory is done, we're like, oh, I'm not going to read my Bible today or go to prayer meeting because I'm just too exhausted from that other battle. No, that's when you really need to go. You really need to keep, you still need to put the word in front of you. You need to be put it in in your ears because the enemy's waiting for you to put down your armor. Okay? And then he's going to try to steal the victory back. You're fighting an enemy. There's an enemy that's watching you day and night to see what he can take from you. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his mission. Kill, steal, and destroy. So when he sees you lay down your Bible, your Bible's getting some dust on it, he was like, now's the perfect time. Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Haven't up. touched it all week. Super Bowl. They didn't even go to up. church because they wanted to go to that early viewing or movie Super or whatever. You never know. Give up. So no, important, important. The this word of God every single day, okay. every single day. What's Don't allow it to grow static. Um, it will either your faith, your faith is doing one of two things. It's either strengthening or it's weakening. And you know what it's doing. You can feel it. Just like, I'll give you an example of my own self, okay? Physically. Physically, I work out. I have a regular workout schedule. And I work out, and I've worked out for years. My body is used to working out. On um, Monday, I, I, oh, I've gone to almost every one of Sierra's doctor's appointments. She had an appointment at... 10 o'clock on Monday. I knew Monday morning I needed to get up early and go work out. We had family in from out of town, and I was like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep a little bit late because I was up late, and um, I'll work out after the doctor's appointment. So I just, you know, got up, and I just put, I even put on my workout clothes because I'm like, she's like, Mom, it'll only be 30 minutes. I was like, okay, so we go to the doctor's office. Well, then the doctor decides that she's sending her to the hospital, okay? And so um, from there, I was at the hospital until after, you know, from Monday morning at 11 until um, sometime Tuesday night. And during that time, I had it in my spirit, girl, you need to stretch. You need to do some push-ups or something because your body's getting stiff and I could feel like my neck getting a little stiff because my body's used to moving. Although I wasn't like sitting, I wasn't doing any kind of physical activity and because I was mother of the baby being yeah. born I was like this like a rubber band well I didn't heed that voice and then I like pulled something by not working <laughs> out okay so you know I felt that in my spirit that you I needed to do you know some you know just some little maintenance things so that my body wouldn't be like a rubber band ready to break and so I knew that, and I didn't do it. Well, spiritually, it's the same thing. I, went, I took her to the hospital. I did not have my Bible, okay? I did have the app on my phone. I had Daniela, you know, pack me a bag, and her husband brought, brought it to me, and my iPad was there. So I was in the room, and I was reading the scriptures over her and the baby and, you know, the family and stuff. But we, we have to be attuned to that spirit. He's going to tell you, you know, mm -hmm. things to eat, things to drink, what mm -hmm. you need to do, mm -hmm. what scriptures you need to read. Mm -hmm. um, read. Um, 
your faith is either strengthening you or weakening you. Or no, you're not weakening you. But your um, your faith is either growing or it's shrinking. Okay, that's what I want to say. It's either growing up and becoming right, or it's getting smaller. And you can tell. You can tell when you're getting weaker or stronger. And what do you do when you feel like you're getting, you're losing some ground? You're not as strong. You get into the Word. Well, you're like, what do I read? The Spirit will tell you. You know, yesterday morning when I got up, I was, you know, I couldn't hardly move. And this morning I was like, if I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get up and go because I really could not walk. I could not walk. And I said, I think that, Lord, I've taken my healing. I've pled the blood of Jesus over this. I am healed, and I'm going to get up and go because that's where you want me to be. And um, now I'm walking fine. So mm -hmm. I am healed. Mm -hmm. But um, yesterday morning when I got up, I was like, okay, Lord, what am I going to read? And so it's, I'm like, Mark 4, Mark 5. So I just started reading it, started meditating on it. So or so is the word. You know, just letting it go in, letting him fill me with what he knew I needed to have. Okay? Um, he's going to give you what you need for what's coming down the road. Okay? If you're needing comfort, how many times have you felt like desolate and just like, you don't know why you feel that. You have, you're, you're just down in the dumps and you go to your Bible and you're like, Lord, give me a word. And you read it and that's the word that you need. That's the word you need. That's, right. That's how it is. So, always growing your faith. It will either strengthen or weaken. It's doing one of two things. Do y'all receive that? Amen. 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 I do have um, 